A few weeks ago, Cosmetics Business, which is like a trade publication, proclaimed Ectoin the ingredient of the year. It's an ingredient that was discovered in the 80s and has been gaining skincare traction pretty slowly over that time and over the last year or so has kind of experienced a bit of a boom. Cosmetic Business says that Google searches rose 123% in the last quarter of 2023 and Look Fantastic, which is one of the large online skincare retailers, says that their kind of act one searches on the website raised 581%. That's a pretty huge jump, a huge uptick in consumer awareness. Originally, act one was talked about more for its hydration balancing effect, very much in the same conversation as other humectants like glycerone or hyaluronic acid. But its reputation over time has since developed into more discussion around its protective claims from environmental stresses. Ectoin is a naturally occurring molecule that's derived from microorganisms that thrive in extreme environments. This is also known as an extremolite, if I've said that right. It is thought that Ectoin acts as a bit of a shield, protecting cell structures and proteins in the skin. One key fact that kind of differentiates Ecto-1 from a lot of other skincare ingredients is that it actually already has clinical standing. It's used in things like eye drops and nasal sprays, and it's even recognized as a medical device for the treatment and care of eczema and even other forms of dermatitis. Ecto-1 has a lot of efficacy substantiation across multiple different percentages. In general skincare and cosmetics, it seems to be used at 0.3% up to 2%, whereas medical devices are using 5 to 7 in that range. I haven't been able to find any regulatory limitations or any kind of forced categories around the different percentages like you might see with like salicylic acid or something. Um, Ecto-1 is just kind of used however much you want. <laughs> From what I can gather, Ecto-1 forms a protective layer on the skin, so it probably stands to reason that having a higher percentage will make that protective layer maybe develop faster or work more efficiently, I'm not sure, but that's kind of the reasoning that I can think of. Like in normal skincare, it's usually used in serums and stuff, so it's playing together with other ingredients, whereas in the medical devices, it's basically a direct application of Ecto-1 as like the feature or like active ingredient. Ecto-1 is an ingredient of interest to me personally because it just plays well with a lot of other ingredients. It seems to be very stable in formulation but it also seems to be quite easy to formulate and that ticks a lot of boxes because there are some skincare ingredients that are super finicky that really limit the formulation options. Ecto-1 is available in so many different product categories, it's actually pretty awesome. Ecto-1 has a pretty wide range of benefits, so it's anti-inflammatory, it's known to have anti-pollution properties, anti-wrinkle and just helps with general barrier repair. It can help skin cells withstand environmental stresses from UV radiation and general dryness and dehydration. As I mentioned earlier, Exoin has been around for a while, so it's not exactly a new ingredient to the market. It's just being featured a little bit more as like a star ingredient. You might actually already be using some products with Exoin in it. Kate Somerville has it in the Delicate collection, and Barbara Sturm, Dr. Barbara Sturm, has it in her Better Be Niacinamide Serum. Dr. Jart was really the brand that I probably noticed first as uh, kind of featuring Ecto-1 on the label. I'm sure other brands had done it before, but this was just the one that I noticed. So of course I ran out immediately immediately to buy this moisturizer. I was so keen to see someone feature Ecto-1 actually on the front of the label. But this moisturizer is not good. I hate it. It feels like paste, a little bit gluey. Not a good example of how Ecto-1 can actually be used in an elegant way. If you're interested in Ecto-1 more for its medical claims around like eczema maintenance or other forms of dermatitis, then you'll probably be looking at pharmacy brands. I haven't been able to find anything in Australia or even in the US that features ecto as an actual eczema treatment. It seems to mainly be concentrated in European pharmacy and I've seen it scattered through a few K-beauty brands as well. In the European pharmacy, you'll tend to find it in that sort of 7% range. I bought one from a brand called Uboss, I think is how you say it. I'm pretty sure it's a Greek brand and it comes in a gel cream format that feels a lot like Dew's Instant Angel, so a really awesome texture. A few other brands have a, um, some options too, like E45 and Mustella, I think is how you say it. Um, so there's definitely some choice there, and it could be something to explore if you're trying to limit your use of topical steroids in the management of eczema, or just exploring it as a way of kind of controlling dryness, dehydration, if that's the reason you're using it. 
The pharmacy options are of course a great price point and the textures are surprisingly great. Um, it's just that the ingredient focus is more solely on Ectoin, whereas maybe in a more cosmetic skincare product you'll see it blended with a bunch of other skincare ingredients too. So it ultimately just depends on what your focus is and if you just want to explore the benefits of Ectoin as an ingredient, like without distraction, then the pharmacy brands are a great way to go about it. Even luxury brands have jumped on the bandwagon of Ectoin. Dior has it scattered in a few of their products, I think especially in their snow range. And I'm currently using the Hourglass Equilibrium Hydrating Essence, which is a huge favorite of mine. I think one standout product in particular is the Dr. Dennis Gross Feel and Repair Serum. I had no idea this even had Ectoin in it, but it's Ectoin blended with niacinamide, a bunch of plant extracts and antioxidants, and even peptides. It has everything I could ever want in a skincare serum, so I've become a huge fan of it. Plus, it just has an awesome texture, so they've like nailed the design of this product. I would say if I were critiquing it, the inky list is a little bit ridiculously long, but they somehow have managed to balance everything really well, so it works regardless. Another standout product that features Ectoin that hasn't been around too long is the Dr. Sam Bunting Flawless Moisturizer Intense. I think Dr. Sam has a great brand overall, but this moisturizer in particular has just taken things up a level. It's so well designed, it's highly nourishing and highly moisturizing, very rich feeling but the balance is done really well, so it doesn't feel oily or too greasy. So they've just kind of created this moisturizer that is surprisingly decadent, but you don't really feel that on the skin. It doesn't have any kind of annoying residue and it doesn't come off on your pillow and all that stuff. Along with Ectoin, this also features centella extracts as well as some ceramides and another hydration complex called Aquaxol, I think is how you say it. In this video, I've discussed how Ectoin helps with dryness and dehydration, and that may make it sound like it's a, an ingredient more for dry skin concerns, but a healthy, well-moisturized, well-balanced skin barrier will help every skin type. Um, it's just gonna be more about like product texture and how you want the format of application to be. If you happen to have oily skin, congestion-prone skin, if oil control is the concern, and even if you have acne, I found a particular product in European pharmacy as well. It's called the Rilla Still Acne Still Sebum Normalizing Gel, I think is how you say it. This is super lightweight. It's a fluid gel texture, layers extremely well, feels invisible on the skin, but actually properly hydrates as well. Overall, it's like a microbiome support serum, and it's one of my favorite skincare discoveries of the year, or of at least the last few months. So I'm a big fan of this, and it, and it also has a great price point. If you're a fan of milky essences, milky toners, a small brand called Equal Reaction recently released a fortifying milk. Um, it doesn't specifically kind of highlight or target Ectoin, but Ectoin is included, probably in a smaller percentage. This is just a really nice, lightweight, milky toner, easy to layer, that is also boosted with a bunch of other sort of skin barrier ingredients. So if you just want to try out something that's relatively affordable, and maybe if you haven't tried a milky toner before, they're starting to become quite popular because of the glazing milk from Rode, I think. Um, this is definitely not as heavy as like the Laneige cream skin. It's quite lightweight and easy to use and integrate. So the Equal Reaction one is a good option. If hair and scalp is more your thing, is it Jisoo or Gisu? Gisu? They have a scalp serum that also has Ectoin in it. I just found this out last week, so I ran out to buy it. I've only used it for a few days, so no real thoughts, but it does feel quite nice and moisturizing without weighing my hair down, even though I don't have much hair, so you know, don't trust me on that. Um, but yeah, that's a, a good one to try if you just want to explore the hydrating effect of Ectoin in a hair product. From a retinoid perspective, Peach and Lily have released a retinaldehyde serum that is sort of bolstered or boosted by Ectoin. That combination makes a lot of sense to me because you have the potential side effects of retinal, but then you have the kind of protective effects of Ectoin. So really great job that they've done that in like one single formula. The actual texture of this is a little bit pasty and it's super, super yellow and looks a bit weird going on. But after it's absor absorbed, it's totally fine and I don't experience any pillow transfer. So this is actually a great product and I'm a big fan of it as a retinoid option. Unofficially, and definitely do not quote me on this because it's very loosey-goosey information that I just saw in passing, um, but I once watched, I think it was a live stream, it might have been a podcast where an ingredient supplier of Ectoen mentioned that it has a kind of comparable level of SPF protection as an SPF 10. 
So that's pretty cool. Again, it's definitely not a formal UV filter, but potentially as a booster, that's an interesting concept. Um, a few brands like Bioderma, I think it's Ultrasun, and even Chanel in some of their sun care has Ectoin included. Um, so I would love to see more brands embrace Ectoin in sunscreen products. It just seems to make sense in that format as well. Again, I'm not saying it's an SPF filter, but think of it as an SPF booster. I'll flash up on screen some other products that contain Ectoin just in case you happen to be using them anyway, but there's Biosense, another Peach and Lily product, there's Innisfree and a few other K-Beauty brands, so Ectoin is definitely around. I know I've been hyping Ectoin up a lot in this video and I don't mean to come across like it's this must-have all solving ingredient. It's just sort of something that I'm looking at as a point of interest. If maybe I'm looking at two products and one has Ectoin and the other doesn't, then I might be swayed to the Ectoin product instead. It's just a skincare ingredient that actually has quite a lot of substantiation that not a lot of other ingredients do. So it's just of interest to me. I don't think it's a life-changing thing. I don't think your skin will like change dramatically because it has Ectoin in it. It's just any small thing that we can do, especially if it's blended in with other ingredients. I think that's always good. Overall, I think Ectoin is just a solid skincare ingredient that probably deserves to be as well known as hyaluronic acid or glycerin. And I think especially if you experience chronic dehydration or if you have very easily sensitized skin, then Ectoin is maybe something to explore like more seriously. Thanks for hanging out with me to discuss this rising skincare star. Let me know if you've used it, if you want to use it, if you have any general questions. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Sam by the Counter. I will see you next time.